Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode, I will be sharing with you the new Vim configuration that I like to use when working on Go projects. So I have two gists that I will be linking in the description. Those two, those two include first the basic configuration for new Vim that I believe also works for Vim, and also the configuration that I use specifically for Go files. But before showing you that, I want to show you something. Uh, I'm going to be displaying the the keys that I'm pressing and if you notice I'm pressing hello world whatever you will you get the idea this is with the with the idea of um, giving you more context of the, the keys that I'm pressing when I'm when I'm describing the the different plugins and the different settings that I like to use and uh, when working and when using NeoVim now before that i want to show you the terminal that i'm using it's called iterm2 for the mac which is a very popular one and the font that i do like which is a patch font called uh, fira code nerd font and with this does it allows to support a few different uh, options that are applicable to the plugins that i will be sharing with you specifically the support for embedded icons as well as uh, a few things for ligatures if i recall correctly and what ligatures does is that if i load a file and if you notice something in interesting like not equal line here right here when i'm disabling ligatures you will see how, how it changes and the whole point this is just kind of like eye candy you know it's just to, to give you a different way to see the code it really doesn't change anything in the actual source code it's just a way to display and render the code in a different way i do like it um but anyways let's jump into the code and different options that i like to have and use when using NeoVim. Specifically, um, I'm going to call out a few of those settings. I'm not going to be covering all of them line by line because otherwise this video will be super long. But these are the options that I like to have that are applicable to any file. Doesn't matter if it's a Go file or maybe a Ruby file or, or C file or whatever. These are the different options that I have by default that I look like to have for all the files, for all the file types that is. The first one will be number, relative number. So what this thing does is allows you to uh, show you a relative number on depending on the line that you are, uh, you know, you, you, the line that you're on at the moment. So for example, this is line 56. To jump to line 60, you use the line 60. If you want to jump uh, seven lines uh, uh, up, you do seven. Uh, I'm sorry, seven. It will be 60 here, seven. K will go up if I want to do 7 down it will be 7 uh, J for going down or for going up respectively now with this thing the cool thing about it is that you can see immediately if you want to jump to line again you want to jump to line uh, 13 above line 70 77 in instead of doing the math in your head you know 77 minus 13 and so on and so forth you do 13 and then boom and similarly going down so that's pre pretty much what it is is uh, it's a small thing that is bundled in in NeoVim that uh, it just you know boost in, in productivity right there uh, if we jump into the other one will be the ruler I think everybody uses that one you see the ruler right here uh, on the right right side and there is an orange indent color uh, column color which again is this one Um those kind of a basic basic things and the other one that I like to call out is the use of this N N Net RW, which is triggered by uh, when I'm doing dot uh, colon X uh, E X E uppercase X, and it will display the sort of like a file browser that you can see, and then you can literally do that. I mean, browse the files, and then they will if you select a file, it will just load it and whatnot. Now there is another popular plugin called uh, Nerd which I know a lot of people use I I, I I I I mean you can use it nothing stops you but I like using this one in particular because it's already bundled in so you don't have to do anything else but just configuring the way it is now I know a lot of people like it because it sort of make, makes uh, your Veeam or NeoVeeam look like an ID where you have like a left side of looking at the like sort of like your workspace with the folders and whatnot but I do 
personally don't like that because I like to work a lot with um, vertical uh, panes and whatnot, like a different buffers loaded on the same screen so I can jump back and forth between what I'm trying to do. And all of this will make more sense when I'm showing you a few of the different commands that are included in Fimgo that allow you to do things like this more easily, that is. Now, the plugin that I like to use for uh, installing plugins is called Plug, and this thing it allows you to easily install different plugins uh, when you define them in your configuration, like this one, for example. Like you define Plug, and literally the path that in most cases indicates a GitHub repository, and you can the the Plug uh, uh, plugin or program, whatever we're calling this, it defines a different ways to install or update or remove those plugins depending on the things I want to do. I have six um, basic uh, plugins that I like to use, and no matter what what programming language I'm using, and most of them are easily visible on this screen. Like for example, for the one called Vim Airline is the line right here, the top top the bottom bar install the bottom bar that indicates the file that was open the file type the, f the encoding the line that you are browsing like this is number five nine ten and so on and so forth or the percentage of the file depending on, on, on where you're you're scrolling and those kind of things and also if you remember what I was telling you about the actual uh, patch font that includes the go file the, not the go file the file types as icons there is this icon right here that actually is being complemented with the one that I have right here below, Vim Dev Icons, which sort of complements Control P as well. So Vim Dev Icons allows you to load those uh, fonts that happen to be embedded different characters that look like fonts or file types, and allows you to add that support to other plugins like Vim Airline, which you can see right here with this go file but also with another one called control p and what control p does is a sort of like a fuzzy search if i do sort of like post test and then test you will notice that it's doing a fuzzy uh, search of the file that happens to be matching these uh, different terms if i load that one it will just load as expected but if you notice there are a few different things right here like the, depending on the icons uh, and I'm using the arrows in this case. You'll see if I do a DB, you will notice how the icon changes. This is a JavaScript file. This is sort of like, you know, looks like a paragraph kind of thing. So they have different icons and so they will easily, they allow you to easily and quickly uh, see what can, kind of file type that is depending on the, on the actual uh, file type, obviously. And it's sort of like another way, an indicator to, to see how you can differentiate those files. Now, if we go back to the other one, which is Vim Commentary, it allows you to comment out code. Now, the way to show you is I have, like, let's go to line 14. If I lo do a uh, junking and then I comment all of this out, it just basically, that's what it does. It comments out code depending on your selection. If I, I want to this, uh, go back to the way it was, I just do the same keystrokes or say a key sequence of, of the things that I did before. That's really, really cool. Now the other one that I do like is the Vim Git Gutter. And um, what Vim Git Gutter does is that on the left side of the of NeoVim, there is a gutter right here that includes the relative number. But if I go and modify something, depending on what I do, it will display an indicator that says either minus or a plus. Um, and it will show you either you remove or you add new changes. If I go here and say uh, something, and I'm, I'm I'm doing I'm adding a new line in between these two other lines, it will say, "Hey, this line 17 is a new line." It's a way, it's a nice way to quickly notice if something changed. And regarding those changes, there is this one called tabline. And um, what tabline does is, for example, uh, you notice how there is a plus right here that literally indicates that the file was modified and that's coming from that specific uh, plugin. And not only that, it allows you to navigate between the different tabs. If I do, for example, this is number two, I can do a two 
GT to jump into that tab or I can do GT to jump into the next one or sort of like just rotate between the tabs or go back or you know you get in you get idea it's sort of a way to, to navigate between different tabs if you like that workflow uh, uh, using your 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 keys now just revert this thing now when we are talking about go there are three plugins that i like to use which is uh, fame go which most likely everybody uses uh, coc or the conqueror of completion and this one called old time ulti old time ulti snips which is for auto uh, for um snippets so let's jump into into vim code and for that one i have a uh, gist as well again the link will be in the description and this one is most it literally has all the default configuration that is included in the in the readme the only things that i added were for those cases for the go coverage um and not the cover go coverage i'm sorry for mapping the gd which is go to definition and that's basically what it is the other thing that i added in this file was the configuration for the coc which includes the different sort of uh, mappings for jumping into a file or jumping into a definition or maybe renaming a type those kind of things and i will show you how that works so let's say i am let's jump into one of the vim uh, commands that i have will be you know doing as which is a split and if I do AT, it will create a new tab. Let's close this. But if I do a, let me close this one. If I want to rename something using COC, we'll do like RN, it will say task, I don't know, task two. And it will literally do the rename for us if I do just a write all, uh, and it will do that basically so we don't have to do anything. And now if you notice right here, and this go, goes back to Vim Gutter, you will see also that the change were safe but we didn't they are not committed just yet and and with that you will notice that not not so the 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 way this plugin works and it's really important to to know is that when you are working with the conqueror oops what happened when you're working on the oh what the heck there you go when you're working on the when well, you're working with the g uh, the conqueror of completion there is a thing that you need to really have and do and that is configure it properly otherwise it's not going to work you need to have to you need to have uh, a, a really recent version of go please and again if you use, you're using vimgo and you do sort of like a go update or go install binaries which again is in the in the description of the of the readme in the readme itself it will install this command called go please and that one is the one actually doing the magic behind the scenes for renaming types or doing the auto completion of those kind of things so if i go back to the code and i want to say uh, in here in this method <coughs> uh, i want to say i don't know t create is actually pulling the configuration from the actual types that we're using now this not only works for the type, types that we're using but as well of uh, with the standard library like if i do do print ln and thanks to go to vimgo i will get i will be getting an error message that it says hey i think you're doing this uh, oh actually if i do something like that it will complain um because obviously i'm missing an argument with uh, printf and similar to the thing i was mentioning with the snippets if you enable snippets you can define something like test and they say hey tab something oops well something yeah well something so, so basically i think you get the idea like you can define your own snippets and uh, and start using that with the other plugin that i mentioned right here util snips and finally we jump into the last th um plugin that i like to use called paper color uh, theme which is the theme that you have been seeing for for a while already for this one you just have to enable it and 
you just have to use it. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. I like using the the dark background, and um, you just have to indicate the paper color color scheme as well. So that's it. I mean, hopefully you found all of this useful. Um, if you know any, uh, if you know of any other plugin that you, you like to use, please let me know. I'm always trying to, you know, improve my my workflow. You know, learn a few new things. So hopefully. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And, and as usual, all the links will be in the description, so feel free to check them out. I will talk to you next time. Take care. See you.